Hi, this is Dunamis333. My brothers and sisters, it's time to get excited here on earth, possibly for the very last time before we leave. Now, we were expecting to leave on the 11th of November. That did not happen. But now it's, it's becoming clear what exactly is going on. Okay, now this is day 15. This is the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. So, we did not leave. Yes, that's true. But we are now in the Ark officially. Now, um, I want to make some clarification here. When we talk about the, uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, it's seven days. It's seven evenings. So, the first evening is 11-12. That's the first evening. You see, so the reason why that is important to know this is so that we can know when is the seventh evening. The seventh evening is 1718. So the evening of the 17 going into the uh, uh, 18, then the morning of the 18 is the time of the sacred assembly. It's not a, this is not, this, no longer a feast here. It's a sacred assembly. So the last evening in the, in the in the tabernacles is the evening of the 17th through the night going into the dawn of the 18 this is very important so this is the last day this is the great day of the feast not this one not 22 23 it's 21 22 very important to note this now my brothers and sisters now let's get excited now that now, now that I've mentioned that we now know that John 7 37 on the last day that great day of the feast jesus stood and cried out remember what i said is referring to this day here going through the night into this day now and that is like i like i pointed out here day 21 22 the 17 going into the 18 now we now know that the last day the lord had in view was the great day of the Feast of Tabernacles. In other words, this is John 6, 39, 40, 44. The Lord is referring to the Feast of Tabernacles. Let's just read it. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. What day was in view here? The last great day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. This is referring to the resurrection of the saints. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. This is the day that we have all been waiting for. Now, this is Leviticus 23, 34-36. The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. On the first day there shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. For seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It is a sacred assembly. So you can see that this day here is the sacred assembly this is the last great day of the feast that segues into the time of the sacred assembly now what i want to point out here what are we doing in the in the sukkot what are we doing in the tabernacles it says here that we're offering um for seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to the lord now people be thinking what does that actually mean it basically means we are sealed in the uh, in the tabernacle, and everything that we're doing now is preparing us. Everything that we're doing by the Spirit of God is preparing us for the final day to be uh, transformed. You see, this word fire. Whenever you see this word fire, they're referring to the love of God that we are exhibiting now. Uh, why is this important to know this? This is, um, let me read this. This is Psalm 50, 1 to 5. The mighty one, God the Lord, has spoken and called the earth from the rising of the sun to his going down out of Zion to perfection of beauty. God will shine forth 
our God shall come and shall be very and shall not keep silent. A fire shall de, shall devour before him. Now, what does this mean? Who is the fire of God going to devour? It's going to devour those who are not uh, living in righteousness. Those who are living in wickedness. That's what the fire is going to devour. But if you are, if you have this fire in you already, if you are, uh, have his love in you already, the fire doesn't consume. It actually uh, regenerates. That's, that's what separates those who practice righteousness by the Spirit of God from those who don't. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous all around him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. And now, how, how have we made a covenant with the Lord? Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So it's the things that we do by the Spirit of God, the good things that we do towards others. That's the sacrifice. That's the fire that we are offering up now as we dwell in the tabernacle. Now this is um, Malachi 4, 1 and 2. For behold, the day is coming. What day is that? The day that is ahead of us. The day of the rapture. The day of uh, the, the last great day of the feast. Burning like an oven. And all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will be stubble. You see, when the, the fire of God's glory, as it increases, which is going to start happening over the next seven days, those who are wicked don't become righteous. They become more wicked. They become more depraved. Hmm? And the day which is coming shall burn them up, said the Lord of hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branch. You know what this means? In other words, they won't have any desire to repent. There's no all human uh, emotion, all uh, humane emotion has gone from these people. But to you who fear my name, who what name do we fear? The name of Jesus. Hmm? The son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. Notice the, the word here. The Lord is, is called the son of righteousness. S-U-N. What does he radiate? Righteousness. So those who are receiving his righteousness by practicing it, they are the ones that are going to be transformed. This is what, is, this is what it means when it says healing in his wings. And notice those who are receiving this righteousness are those who fear the Lord, who have reverence for the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, so I want this is very important for us to understand. The Lord is called the Son, S-U-N, of righteousness. Why I'm emphasizing this will become clear very, uh, very shortly. Notice what we read here in 1 John 2, 29. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him you see the righteousness that we practice is his righteousness and and is and the power that transforms is in his righteousness that's why when anyone is left if anyone is left it's because the righteousness that they're practicing did not originate from the son of righteousness it has to originate from jesus christ to transform us when he comes Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. You see it there? Yeah, people, yeah, a lot of Christians come around saying, oh, we are sinners. We are, our, our righteousness is filthy rags. That's not true. When you are born of God, the righteousness that we practice is his righteousness. Notice the word there, practice. It's not something you claim while you continue living in wickedness. Mm? You're righteous when you're practicing righteousness. And let's be very clear. When we talk about being wicked, there's always somebody at the end of the, of the, of the wicked acts. There's somebody who is suffering from wickedness. And the same way, when we talk about being righteous, there's somebody benefiting when we are practicing righteousness. Mm? A spouse, a child, a parent, a brother, a sister. There's always somebody benefiting when we are practicing righteousness. But when people are doing wicked things, there's always somebody who is suffering from wickedness. That's how that's, that should be the rule of thumb. Righteousness is not some is not some symbolic 
righteousness you know there's always a beneficiary of it that's how you know you are righteous because there are, there'll be people who will be a benefiting from the righteousness we practice and because it's from god it's going to transform us as that day gets closer now this is Isaiah 30 26 27 the light of the sun will be sevenfold this sun is not this sun not the physical sun this is the lord jesus christ the light of the sun will be sevenfold as the light of seven days in the day that the Lord binds up the bruise of his people and heals the stroke of their wounds. This is referring to the transformation of our bodies, my brothers and sisters. So this is where we are right now. We are in the seven days. We are in the ark. We are in the, in the booth. And with each passing day, the glory, the son of righteousness is increasing his glory. And as we approach that very last day, that's when the the glory. Because what I want, I want my brothers and sisters to understand is that the resurrection power, the transforming power is in the righteousness that we're practicing now. Mm? It's in it already. We just need to be aware of it and be prepared to be transformed when we get to the last great day of the feast. Now, I want to share... Um, there's a, a a lady had a, a rapture dream. This was back in in June 2009. Um, she posted it on the Dove site. I've kind of edited it a bit to make it tidy, um, so it can be read uh, f uh, through. But this is what, I'm just going to read it, so you can see what point I'm trying to make here. Her name uh, her name is Dana Dana Tokia. Let me just read it. Okay, this is what she uh, she posted. Uh, a sister in Christ saw the following in her rapture vision i remember seeing the number 221 written in big gold letters my eyes were drawn to the number 21 from the number 221 then my eyes were drawn to the number 22 it was as if someone was pointing out for me to look first at number 21 and then to look at number 22 from the set number 221 so you can see what she was being shown she was being shown 21 as it's connected to 22 so 21 going into 22 17 going into 18 this is where we are right now this is where we are looking to see the glory of god the, the rapture take place see let's continue um where am i This is what I think I wrote this here. I wrote this. Thursday 17 November is day 21 on the Torah calendar. At 16.38 hours at sunset, Jerusalem time, the day will change from day 21 to day 22. So that will be Thursday 17 November going into Friday 18 of November. Here's Dana's rapture vision. I had a rapture experience at exactly 10.20 a.m. This was back in June 2009. I experienced the rapture at that instant as if it had occurred at that moment and time was up. When I looked at the sky, I witnessed the sun very bright with such splendor and God was in the light with such majesty. So we now know that this sun is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. All of a sudden, huge rays of beautiful gold light from the sun's rays were emanating from this very sun. I then suddenly found myself standing outside from, the, from this rapture experience. So she was seeing herself in, in a third person uh, kind of way. The rays of the sun were heading out towards the earth and were heading towards me. I was then lifted up from the ground and was being enveloped in the beautiful bright gold light while I was partaking in the rapture and being lifted up towards heaven. I was being slowly raised up higher and higher. It was like the rays of this very beautiful bright light was pulling me towards it and keeping me safe as it was surrounding me. I felt my whole entire being undergo a slow transformation at that very same moment as I was slowly being raised up higher and higher. In a twinkling of an eye, my body and soul was changing. I felt how my body underwent this transformation. I witnessed how these huge rays of gold colored light from the sun had extended towards the whole earth and was snatching others like myself. 
I witnessed how others were being snatched and drawn towards this light like a magnet. Beside me was a young man who was also enveloped in this gold light. It was like a transparent and clear bubble of protection and we both looked at each other in total amazement and shock as to what had just occurred all of a sudden. We could not believe our eyes as at what was happening. It was so incredible. Afterwards, I found myself back in my apartment, standing in my room, my legs still shaking from this rapture experience that was so real, as if it had occurred at that instant. So you see, my brothers and sisters, this is what we are going to experience. The glory emanating from Jesus Christ is going to flow into us more powerfully than ever on the last day, that great day. The saints are going to resurrect and we are going to be changed and we're going to join them. You see, so this is what we're looking towards right now. Um, we're, we're, we, we thought we were going on the 11th. We're going on the 17, 18. Um, so everything here is still, I just moved everything here forward seven days. So these are why my uh, former, um, former videos, I'll, I'll leave all these things in the, in this, uh, video. So I've just moved everything forward. Everything still remains the same, but it's just moved forward seven days. So my brothers and sisters, so I'll just leave all this in the, in the, um, in the comments, I'll pin this in the comments. I also like to share, um, just to encourage my brothers and sisters, uh, this lady, um, her name, her channel name is Heshkina. She's actually uh, expecting a baby uh, on the first week of uh, December, and her daughter had um, a, a rapture dream and was shown that the rapture will take place while she's still pregnant. And uh, she's very, I think, uh, from this video, she's actually very heavily pregnant. And then, so the the young a girl was shown she went up in the rapture with her mother and their husband they went up in in the rapture and they were in a place uh, there was a couple that they saw there married couple and they were happy that they that they that she was going to have the baby in he in heaven and uh, so it's a, it's a beautiful um a beautiful rapture dream i'm going to put the link in the uh in the description of this uh, video so that just encourage you that look we are close and and the lord is showing us exactly when he's coming for us so i just want people, my brother and sister to be encouraged that we are going home in a matter of days so be encouraged um please like subscribe share this video and um the links will be there if you want to support me further so my brothers and sisters, I'm hoping that this will be my last video. I'm really hoping that this will be my last video. That the next time we see, it will be face, it will be face to face at the wedding banquet. So have a lovely uh, weekend, and I'll speak to you hopefully in the skies. Bye for now.